last time we talked about getting the parties right. And today we're going to talk about getting the interests right. So discuss with your partner what does interest mean? Can you define an interest or a person's interest in a negotiation? What do you think it means? Define interests. We're talking about interests in a negotiation. Try to give a definite. Do you understand define? Yes. So try to define what interests mean to you. What does interest mean to you? <coughs> Give me a definition. Explain. Somebody who doesn't understand. Imagine I don't understand what interest means. So explain to me. decision. At stake means uh, it's going to be decided in the negotiation. It's at stake. It's going to be decided. So that's why your interest is why you're involved in the negotiation. Okay? Because I care about these things, that's why I'm involved in the negotiation. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about interest. Something you care about which is going to be decided at the negotiation. So again, we're going to look at some different uh, headings here. So whatever each party cares about and is at stake is an interest. So we need to map an interest, just like mapping the parties. We shouldn't let the price overshadow uh, some potentially richer set of interests. So there can be more interest than just the price. Don't mistake people's bargaining position. Don't mistake that people focus on the price, that they don't have other interests. They still have other interests. We need to ask, listen, and probe. We had some handout in the class with probing questions. Okay. We need to use public sources to map interests use internal sources to map interests, use some knowledgeable advisors, 
Be aware of unconsciously skewed perceptions. What does skewed perception mean? What does perception mean? Perception is how I see something. Is my perception the same as other people's perception? Is this glass half full or half empty? Is anybody say half empty? Half full. So some people might say that's half empty. Some people might say that's half full. So they have different perception. Perception means how do I see something? So people can have skewed perceptions without unconsciously. It means that their perception may be changed. Skewed is changed. We're going to talk about these ideas. Mythical fixed pi. Self-serving role biases, partisan perception. Don't understand now, but we'll explain later. Okay? And we will need to counteract some psychological mechanisms that can also change perception. So we'll talk about all of those things. So today we'll just talk about the first five things and then we'll do a practice practice negotiation. So the first one Make mapping interests a central priority. Okay, so first of all, we just said whatever people care about at stake is an interest. That's clear, right? So then we need to make this a central priority. You understand priority? Priority is very important, right? So mapping the interest should be central in the negotiation. So, negotiators often fail to sort out truly must have from the important and from the desirable but not critical. Okay? Do you understand the difference between must have and important? Must have. Which is, which is stronger, must have or important? Must have. Must have is, is, is more serious, right? So, negotiators don't think enough about the interests, their interest or the other person's interest. Okay, what are the things that I care about that I must have? What are the things that I care about that are important? Some of them is desirable, some of them are critical. Desirable, I want. Critical, I need. Okay, so we need to think about the person's interests. Our, their interests and our interests. Which one do they need, which one do they want? So the best negotiators are very clear on their interests. Okay? But they also know the trade-off among their less and lesser interests. So they know, I care about this, but I can give this up. Do you understand trade-off? Trade-off. Like, you have to give them something and they give you something. So they understand there are some of my interests which I can give up to the other side. Okay? They are very flexible and creative on advancing this kind of thing. So, an example here is a perfume supplier. So a perfume supplier wants to sell their perfume in the department store. Okay? When you go into the department store on the ground floor, they often have the perfume because it has a nice smell when people enter the store, right? Yes. So they have to negotiate with the department store about selling their perfume. So what do you think? What kind of things does the perfume supplier care about when they're selling their perfume in the department store? What kind of interests do they have? What do they care about? Location. Location. What kind of location do you want in the department store? Um, outside the passenger side of the department store. And so where the passengers pass by? There's a lot of foot traffic, we say. Yes. Foot traffic, a lot of people passing by. Okay. Anything else? What else do you care about? Location. What else? So here we can see some examples, right? Here we see the desirability of the location on the sales floor, but also the amount of space. How much space can we get? 
Okay, can we get a big space or a small space? What about the look? The look of the place. Is it nice style or not? Okay? If we have a special promotion, special promotion, uh, who are we going to share the cost? Is the department store going to share the cost of the promotion? Do you understand promotion? Yes. So we have a discount or gift, giving away gifts. Is the department store going to have those? So these are things we care about. Which one do you think is the least important here? Out of these four, amount of space, location, design or look of the store, or sharing the cost on promotions? Which is the least important? Which is must have and which is just desirable? Have location desirable, just desirable. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Special promotions. Special promotions, right? We are more concerned about selling our perfumes in the long term. Special promotion can help to sell more and advertise, right? But it's not. It's not our main goal is to sell the perfumes over the long term. Okay. So which one are you going to give up if you are doing the negotiation? Which one are you going to give up? Trade off. Must have or desirable? Yeah. So which one, if you're negotiating and they won't give you a good deal for all of these things, which one can you trade off? Do you understand trade off? I'll give you this if you give me this. Yes. So which one are you going to say, I'll give you this if you give me this? Do you have your page, vocabulary page, that I gave you before? If you, I, I will. Do you have that page? With you? So you need to take that page when we do negotiations. You'll be practicing that vocabulary. If you don't have, if you threw away the page, you can ask me to give it to you again, right? You need to keep that. So can, using a sentence from there, can you make a proposal? If you do something, I'll do something. So what? Yes. Okay, so if you give me a good location, then I will pay for the special promotion by myself. Okay? Do you understand? Yes. So the best negotiators are clear about their interests and they know their trade-offs. So they're prepared when they go. I'm going to be clear about this and I can trade off on this. Okay? So <coughs> we look at the example of the perfume supplier. So mapping interests, this is my interests. I'm clear about my interests. What I can trade off, what is must have, what is desirable. But we also have to look at their interests. Okay? Bill Clinton was very famous for worrying about the interest of the other side. Uh, when Bill Clinton went to another country to have a negotiation, he asked his advisor, what are the top four issues for the country? Okay? So for example, Bill Clinton is visiting uh, Germany. Okay? They ask him, what is the top four issues for Germany? Okay? One of them could be financial regulation. Okay? Another one could be the problem with Russia. Okay? Another one could be the migrant crisis. Do you know migrant crisis? Migrant. Refugee crisis. Imin. Ah. How do you say refugee in Korean? Imin is migrant. Imin. Imin. Namin. 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 Yes. The Nam Namin crisis. Yes. So Bill Clinton would ask his advisor, tell me the top four issues for Germany and what does Germany think about those issues? And what can the U.S. do to help Germany about those issues? Okay? So Bill Clinton was thinking about their interest, thinking about Germany's interest. Okay? What is important to Germany? And how can the U.S. help Germany to get to do their interest? That was the number one thing that Bill Clinton did when preparing for a meeting. Do you know Bill Clinton? Yes. So that he could help the other side, Germany, by meeting their interest, or helping them with their interests, then Germany 
can help the US with their interests. So if Bill Clinton understands the other side interest and helps them with their interest, then Germany is also going to be able to help the US with their interest. They'll be happy. So one thing we have to remember is our counterparts will say yes for their reasons, not your reasons. So that's an important point. Uh, you can't convince, persuade the other person to change their mind because it's better for you, right? You can tell them, oh, this, if you give me a lower price, then I can make a much bigger profit. It's much better for me. Please do that. They're not going to say yes, right? The only reason they're going to say yes is because you met their interests for their reason, okay? So if uh, I am calling uh, some airline, right? and I want them to reduce the price and I ask them just please reduce the price for me I want to get a cheaper price, you're going to help me a lot and I'll be very grateful okay, that's one argument I could make right? the other argument I could make to the airline is it's very late you don't have many seats you're not going to get another customer okay, so you should take this price from me which argument is more convincing for the airline the first one or the second one First one, I ask you, please reduce the price for me, right? I'll be happy. Second one, you're not going to, it's too late, you're not going to be able to sell the seat, okay? If you don't sell it to me, I'm going to buy it, I'm not, for a low price, I'm not going to buy it. You won't be able to sell the seat. Which one is more convincing? The second one. The second one, you're looking at their interest, okay? The first one, you're just thinking about my interest. I want a cheaper flight, please give me a cheaper flight, please, pretty please, right? They don't care about you, right? That's the thing you have to remember, your counterpart doesn't care about you, right? They are going to say yes because it's in their interest to say yes. So if you make the argument to the airline, you know, they understand they're not going to find another customer, it's too late. Then it's in their interest to reduce the price and give you the ticket, okay? So we have to think about, remember this, okay? So we need to understand about our counterpart. You understand counterpart? What does counterpart mean? Sang de ban? Other person, other party, right? Counterpart is the easy way to say other party. So we need to think about their competitive challenges before you can strike the best possible deal, right? So we need to ask ourselves this question, what do we need to understand about them? Okay, so, for example, uh, the company I'm competing with, currently they are having a problem with advertising. Okay? The other company is advertising better than they are advertising. So if I understand that they are having a trouble with advertising, I could tell them, uh, I have a very good marketing team. One person is very good at design of the advertisement. So I can let you, I can send my worker to your, to your company for one week to give advice about advertising to your company. Okay? So if we understand about the other company, their challenges and problems, then we can find a way to make a deal with them. So, uh, here are questions that we can ask to understand the other person's interest. Okay? So, what are these people really trying to accomplish with this deal? So, what do they want from the deal? Or what's their point? We need to understand that. Okay? What is their current strategy? And would this deal fit in? So, what's the strategy of the company? Do they want to increase their sales? Do they want to make more profit? Okay. Do they want to expand to a new market? So for example, uh, we saw that there was a Japanese company that wanted to expand to the US market. We saw the example of the Japanese company which bought the US company. So if we, the US company understood that the Japanese company wants to enter the US market. Okay. And we are the only 
company they can buy in the US, then we can raise the price. They'll pay us more money. Okay? Do you understand? Yes. Because we understand their strategy. Okay? Who is taking the lead on the deal? What is this person and their team like? And what's their negotiating history? How will this deal affect their status, compensation, and future prospects? So we talked about the last time the agent problem. And we said that in one case, the agent didn't make the deal because the agent only got commission for new contracts. They didn't get commission for existing contracts. So we have to think about the other person. How does it affect their compensation? So if we didn't understand that about the agent, then we couldn't have made a deal. But because we understood the interest of the agent, so parties and interests is linked together, right? We understood that the agent is interested in a new contract. Then we were able to change our contract slightly to make it look like a new contract and make it a deal. What about the status of the negotiator? Their future prospects. So maybe they can get a promotion. If they do make a deal with us, they can get a promotion. So we know they want to get a deal. Also future prospects. So uh, for example, there was one CEO who was joining the company. New CEO. You understand CEO? Yes. At the top. And the person they sent to negotiate with the CEO about his or her salary and conditions was going to be working under the CEO after the negotiation. So do you think the CEO can get a good salary from the negotiation? No? So here's the CEO. CEO is going to negotiate is the boss of let's say here we have the general administration department. Do you understand administration? Yes. So general administration. How do you say administration in Korean? Holy job, right? So this is going to be next week after they start working. Okay, CEO is going to be the boss. They are going to be under, under the CEO. But now the CEO is negotiating with that person about the CEO's salary, okay, and other conditions. Do you think the CEO can make a good negotiation or not? No, because he is the um, not regulate the, this company, so he didn't uh, this company stretch, stretch or salary plan. Yes, the GA is going to decide the salary and they're negotiating. But what I'm asking you is, do you think he, the CEO can get a good deal or not? Do you understand to get a good deal? Yes. Get a good deal means get, get a good salary, get what you want. Do you think the CEO has the power in the negotiation? He says no. Does anybody say yes? Does everybody agree with no? Think about future prospects. Who is, the, who is the lead person? On, I'm the CEO, this is me. The GA is the lead on the other side. Okay? How will this deal affect the future prospects of the GA? We have to think about that question. If the GA gives me a bad deal, is that going to be good for their future or bad for their future? I'm their boss, they're going to be under me next week. If they make a really bad deal and give me a really low salary, is that good for their future or bad for their future? Bad for their future. Do you want to change your mind? But this, this scenario is not setting the company. So uh, I think this negotiation is so not bad, but it's so good deal. Is not organization. But my question was, you know, this person is negotiating with the CEO. The next week they'll be working under the CEO. So yes. if the CEO understands that, the CEO can get a better deal. They can get a higher salary. Yes. So this was the real life case, and somebody told the CEO, basically you can decide the salary. The GA is not going to say no. Right? You can set the salary and conditions that you want. So it was a mistake by the company. 
to let this person to be the lead negotiator with this, the CEO, okay? Because this person is going to be working under the CEO next week. So they want to keep the CEO happy. So they're thinking about themselves, their own interests, okay? If they give the CEO a nice salary and keep them happy, then the CEO will be very nice to them, maybe give them a promotion, okay? Maybe the CEO will increase their salary later. So we have to think about how does this affect the interest of the other side? Do you understand this story? Yes. So who else is paying special attention to the deal? Who will have to approve the deal? So we might make a deal here, but somebody else has to approve the deal. So we also have to think about their interest. Do you understand approve? Approve means like stamping or saying yes, that's okay. So we have to ask ourselves these questions about the other side and their interests. So then we can map, map their interests, understand their interests. <coughs> so let's uh, do this activity with your car, yes? Shareholders, yes. The shareholders t control the CEO, but they don't watch them on a day-to-day basis. <coughs> Why do they uh, decide on CEO's salary? Board of Directors. Board of Directors is over the CEO, right? The Board of Directors is appointed by the shareholders to... Basically, uh, they have to supervise the CEO, right? They, it's not really a full-time job. The CEO is appointed by the shareholders to manage the company. Okay? So in this case, the board of directors told, sent this person to do the negotiation. So it would have been better if somebody from the board of directors had done the negotiation, right? But they didn't. They, they asked this person to do the negotiation. Okay? So because this person was doing the negotiation, the CEO can understand about this person's interest and their future prospect, and then the CEO could get a higher salary. Right? This person is going to agree to everything the CEO says. Right? They'll be working under them next week. Okay, so good question. Any more question about that situation? Understanding the interest to the other side? No? So then do this with your, your partner. So the person on the left is student A, the person on, on my left. So student A, put up your hand. One. You are student A. Okay, so everybody knows who student A. So student A, I'm giving you an imaginary hundred dollars, not a real one. Here you go. Imaginary hundred dollars. Right okay, now. You can divide with student B as you like. You can give them the hundred dollars, you can give them nothing. You can give them one dollar or two dollars or fifty dollars. But if student B disagrees with the arrangement, you have to give me back the hundred dollars. Okay, so try to negotiate an agreement and then tell me how much you're going to give them. So I gave you a hundred dollars. You can decide how much to give her. But if she says no, nobody gets anything. Okay? Doesn't agree.
You're going to give him 70. You have 100 and you're going to give him 70. You get 30? Yes. Okay. So you're keeping just 30 dollars. Give him 70. 50-50? You get, you get 49? What about you guys? <laughs> 70 for student A. 75 for student A. So, you have a, you have the hundred dollars. You can decide how much to give him. Why did you give him 70? Location in Seoul, so he has many traffic pay, so I donate him to them to public. You're just a generous person. Why is the same here? Why you were deciding? Why did you give 51? He wants more than just You can make a decision, right? So then these two persons got more money, right? So we can see here that sometimes people offer, uh, like they say, I give you, I give you thirty dollars, okay? And the other person will say, No, I prefer that nobody gets anything because it's not fair, right? Even though, even though I would get thirty dollars if I accept the deal, and if I refuse the deal, I get zero, right? Just in my, if I was just thinking about my interest, then yes, I'd accept. So now I refuse, I'm going to get nothing. Why? Because they think it's not fair. So the point is that we're figuring out is that there's more to negotiations than just money. People have more interests than just money in a negotiation, right? So people care much more about the monetary part. Okay, you could say that in some negotiation, Maybe just 50% is economic, but 50% is feeling of fairness or relationships or that kind of thing, right? So, for example, here are other things which are important. Relationships. Uh, we have a big, we'll talk about more later when we talk about the cross-cultural negotiation, but there's a big difference between the North and the South and the East. I know from talking to my wife also about her company, Companies work in a very different way than in, in Ireland or the US, in Korea, right? Basically, people in Ireland and the US don't really care about the relationship with the other person, okay? The most exaggerated one is Austria or Germany, okay? They just are interested in, can the other person do a good job? Yes, then I don't care whether they have, they're nice or have a nice personality or they're rude to me or they give me gifts, or anything, right? I don't care. They do a slightly better job than the other person, then I want to do business with them, okay? But in Southern Europe, and South America, and in the East, in Asia, the relationship is important, okay? People see, think it's important that you have good relationship with the other side. So for example, a business deal which takes just one day in Germany could take four days in China. Because the Chinese people want to go out for dinner, they want to get to know the other person, right? They want to get a relationship. So, uh, <clears throat> in the negotiation we can see this too. Even East like Russia, a famous negotiation about World War II, Stalin refused to be in the same room as the American president, right? He didn't like him, so he refused to be in the same room. And because of the bad relationship, they had a bad kind of agreement, right? So, uh, we also have the social contract. Here we can see resolving conflicts. So, how are conflicts going to be resolved? Because if we make a negotiation, it's not finished. As, as soon as we leave the room, it's not finished. It's going to be ongoing, right? So, recently Greece made a negotiation with the EU about some loan, bailout loan, 
right? Love to have that. But they make the negotiation. Is that it finished? Everything is finished? No, right? Greece has to do all the things they said they would do. And that was a problem in the last negotiations. Greece went to the negotiation and said, yes, we'll, we'll reduce our government employees, right? And then they go out and they don't do it, right? So what are, what's going to happen then? So people also care about this kind of thing in a negotiation. What's going to happen if you don't keep your side of the bargain? Can I trust you to keep your side of the bargain? Okay. What are, how are we going to solve the conflict if there's a conflict? Okay. So not just how much money I'll give you, but if you don't do it, what's going to happen? The, the process of the negotiation, so are we respectful to the other side or not? So if I'm not respectful to you, I show up late for the negotiation, people might say, oh, I don't want to do a deal with that person, right? Or I go to buy the car and the salesperson is very rude to me, right? They don't show me the proper respect. <clears throat> Okay. The, pro the way the negotiation is structured is not, not uh, the way that I want it to be structured. Then we have ethics, like uh, reputation. So if I make this deal, am I improving my reputation? Right. So uh, recently in the EU, uh, they made some deal about the uh, Nanmin, the migrants. So Angela Merkel's reputation looked very good because Germany agreed to accept a lot of Nan Min. Like, they will have like 800,000, whereas the UK will accept just 5,000, right? Every year. So David Cameron's reputation looks bad. Angela Merkel's reputation looks good, okay? So that's another outcome of the negotiation that we can have. We can improve our reputation. So people care about much more just than money. Fairness, relationships, uh, how can we resolve conflicts? Is it the negotiation in a respectful way? Is it being done ethically and fairly? Okay. And what about the reputations? <coughs> so, some people uh, who studied business ethics here, so what is the two main kinds of moral philosophy? For ethics. We'll talk more about ethics later, but briefly now. What are the two main types of moral philosophy? We looked at the story that here there is a bridge, okay, and here is a fat man on the bridge, yes. okay, and here is the train. I'm very good at art, so it's very clear. The train is going on the train track, right? Here's you, you're not as fat as the fat man. There are five people on the tracks here, right? So if you push the fat man over, he's going to stop the train and save five lives, right? Yes. But if you don't push the fat man, the train is going to kill the five people. Yes. What are you going to do? Hands up, who's going to push the fat man off the bridge? Just, why? Hmm? No, I could not have met. I say <laughs> So the, you are thinking about the consequences, right? Do you understand the consequences? Okay, hands up who's no, who's not going to push the right the man off the bridge? No, why not? I don't want to be a murderer. Don't want to be a murderer. So you're thinking about rights. <laughs> the right thing to do. Right? So this is the two main types of moral philosophy. Some people think the consequences are better, so we should do that. And some people think, no, it's wrong. Okay, murder is wrong, so I shouldn't do that. Okay? So we, did, we didn't see everybody's hand, so let's have a look again. Hands up, who is going to push the fat man off the bridge? One, who is going to not push the man off the bridge and let the five people die? You need to put up your hand for one of them. Okay, so three, you three guys didn't put up your hand. What are you going to do? Push the fat man or not? Push the fat man? Hmm? 
No. Poš, poš je tako. Saved five lives, right? So who, who is correct? Is he correct or is she correct? It's philosophy, right? People have different philosophy. Do you understand? How do you say philosophy? Torah, hmm? right? Usually religious people is going to be more on this side, right? More religious, stricter religious people will be more on the right side, okay? Other people is more practical on the consequences side, okay? So, <laughs> the people who said, hands up the people, who's going to push the fat man? One, two, three. Okay, I have another question. You're a doctor, and in one next room you have five patients. Each patient has a problem. They need a transplant within the next day to survive. One is missing their liver, another is missing some lung, another is missing a kidney, another needs a heart transplant. Okay? So those five people will die in the next day if they don't get any transplant. Then perfectly healthy person walks into your office for a checkup. <laughs> Normal checkup. What are you going to do? If you kill that person, you can save the five other people. <laughs> can take all their organs, save five people. That person will die. Just you get five. So what are you going to do now? Hmm? Are you going to kill the person or not? Kill the person? Not kill the well, you change your mind? <laughs> I'm not kill that person. You're not going to kill the person? Yeah. Why are you going to push the fat man? Because <laughs> <laughs> they're fat? If <laughs> I tell you it's a fat person, does that make a difference? <laughs> fat person walks into the office? <laughs> Different situation. <laughs> this one you just have to push, the other one you have to get some syringe, give an injection or... That kind of thing, right? <clears throat> so, we can see that uh, some people in the negotiation play have different type of ethics, right? In, in this, we can also say this one, right? If you say, refuse here, which are you using, rights or consequences? If you refuse this deal, they'll give you $30. You say, no, I don't want this. Are you thinking about rights or consequences? Right, okay, you're saying that's wrong, it's unfair, okay? Consequences, you get zero or 30. So if you get this, the consequence is better if you get 30, right? So you accept that deal, then it means you're thinking about the consequences, right? So in your case, you're thinking about the consequences, right? You're also thinking about the consequences in, the, in this one here, okay? So... <coughs> People have different things that they care about, and they have different ethics. So, we need to focus on interests, not the positions. Okay? So, we shouldn't mistake the bargaining position for a richer set of underlying interests. So, <coughs> it means that people say, I want to reduce the price, I want to buy for $200. Okay? So we shouldn't think that, oh, that person is only interested in the price. That's just their position. Do you understand position? So we shouldn't think just about positions. We should focus on the interests. So this is the main way that the win-win negotiation works. By focusing on the interests rather than positions, we can, we can make a good negotiation. So we talked about the car of John and Mary, right? And if the position didn't match, you want 4,000, right? But I'll only pay 3,500. So our position doesn't match, so it could be no deal. But the win-win says we should find some interest to make a deal. Like, I'll deliver the car to you for free, or you can keep, keep the car for three weeks, okay? Or I'll give you the navigator. I don't need the navigator, okay? So by focusing on the interest rather than the position, we can make a win-win negotiation. 
So issues are things that are on the table. Just this is some vocabulary. Issue is something which is up for discussion. We're going to discuss about it. That's an issue. Positions are the negotiation party stands on those issues. So issue is buying the car, right? Then our position is going to be the price. Okay? My position, your position. Okay? Interests are whatever your counterparts care about or that is at stake in the process. So interest is very wide. What do I care about? I care about keeping the car for three weeks, right? I care about uh, having a fair deal, okay? I care about uh, the relationship. If we make a good relationship, I can sell you another, another car, right? I care about uh, delivery date. Or I care about how it's delivered. So compatible interests often underlie incompatible positions. Incompatible means they don't match. Okay, if you do you do internet dating, you do a compatibility survey. Are you compatible with the other person, right? I like rollerblading, she likes rollerblading, I like shopping, she likes shopping, right? So you can do that on the internet if you want to find a lot of matches, right? Try to make yourself very compatible. Write down, I like shopping, I like romantic movies, right? <laughs> I like uh, fashion, then you get, you're compatible with a lot of girls, right? You can use that tip <laughs> when you do internet dating. You can find a match easily, right? Yes. Do you really like shopping uh, or fashion? That's the one. Anyway, that's compatible, right? Incompatible, you like soccer. She doesn't like soccer, right? You like uh, heavy metal music, she likes classical music. Incompatible. So compatible interests means we have the same interests we can meet, can underlie the incompatible position. So here we have incompatible position, but we can find some interests, like we both live in the same place, we both go to work together, so I can drive you to your work for the next three weeks. Okay? So this is the idea of win-win negotiating. Today we'll be doing a negoci negotiation. And you can also practice this kind of thing. Finding out, not just worrying about the position of the other side, but finding out their interests. <clears throat> so, match A and B. Issue, position and interest with the three things on the left. So match, okay, so draw a line, which is which. then maybe you'll accept a lower salary and we can make a negotiation, right? Maybe I'm happy too. We have compatible interests. I want you to stay at the job for a longer time. So our interest is compatible, even though our position is incompatible. 
I want to pay you a lower salary. Okay. Do you have any question about that? So then just because this can help us also for the, we'll just finish briefly before the break time. Ask, listen and probe. Can you do those things well? Do you have your page? Can you tell me some good question to ask the other side? What do you think is a good question from the list? A good probing question. Read from the page, a probing question. What is the situation of production and winter at the moment? What is the situation, right? On production. That's a probing question. Do you understand probing? Then you have to listen to the other person. You said you're a good listener before, right? So you ask the probing question. Probing means it's not a very general question. Probing is, means this kind of thing, right? So you're probing, right? A probe, noun for a probe, doctors use a probe. They put it in your nose or somewhere, right, to look more detailed. The probing means finding out the other side's interests, okay? So, if you are not sure about the other side's interests, we can set up an exploratory meeting. Okay, so, you can say, I really don't know what they want. Before you have the negotiation, you can call them, and talk to them set up a kind of, you can invite them for an informal dinner, okay? So direct communication can work wonders. I think this is also a difference between men and women, right? Uh, men are not that smart, so they need to be communicated directly by the women, right? And specifically. So my wife, I always ask her, just tell me directly, right? What's the problem? But she wants me to guess what the problem is. <laughs> or I should know what the problem is. I should know why she's not happy or there's some problem, right? But I don't know. So I tell her, just tell me directly. <laughs> right? So men are quite silly sometimes. And also for tidying the house, she asked me, can you tidy the house tomorrow? I would tell her, I don't understand what that means. I really don't understand what it means. So she has to tell me everything in detail, right? Can you clean the balcony? Can you clean the kitchen? Can you clean behind the something? Then I understand. Yes, okay. Now I know what I have to do. Okay, so it's the same here. If we, it sounds simple, but sometimes just asking people. Asking people and they'll tell you. They'll tell you it's the answer directly. So here's the, ex the example we talked about before. The sales rep, whose bonus was based on new contracts. Okay? So if I didn't know that their bonus was based on the new contract, I would, they wouldn't have made a contract with me. Okay? But that person invited the sales rep for dinner before the negotiation. Before the negotiation, they invited them for dinner. They found out their interests. They talked to them and found out their interests. They found out that the sales rep wanted to get commission for new contracts. And then they were able to change it. So this is a very common problem for uh, company, people doing negotiation. They don't think about the other side's interests enough, and then they are too shy. They are too shy to try to find out the other side's interests. Okay? And maybe they spend a lot of time and effort thinking, what is the other side's interest, right? So maybe my wife wants me to spend a lot of time and effort thinking, what did I do wrong, right? What could it be? Right? But I want to make a simple way, just ask her and find the answer. Right? So, it's in the business you can do that way. You can just ask the people. Maybe my wife won't tell me, so personal life can be different. Right? But in, in the business, the other person's interests can help to make the deal. So they know that if you know their interests, then it helps to make a deal together. Right? Especially if their negotiating style is win-win, cooperative. If they're competitive, they might not be so quick to sell their interests. Okay. Do you have any question about this? Mm. So, uh, 
then after the break time, we'll do some practice negotiation. So we don't have 